So some of you mentioned that you have an interest in playing CVs, so I'm going to do a quick down and dirty on the class of ships. The first thing I do is I look over the player board to see what kind of AA defense that all the ships have, so I can get a head start on thinking about what ships I might want to prioritize and what ships, if any, that I might want to stay away from. Uh, this is a lower tier, or tier 4, and there's a lot of tier 3s on the board, so nobody should have particularly strong AAs, but uh, it, it's still an important consideration. So to start the match off, you have three different air aircraft types, rockets, torpedoes, and bombs. I'll start with rockets. Select the numbered button for the aircraft, and then you hit it again to launch it. I recommend starting with the uh, rocket aircraft, the fighters, and uh, we'll talk about why in a second. But the CVs, I think, basically have three different responsibilities in, in their role. Number one is reconnaissance, number two is basically denial, and uh, number three is the, the potential for the very high damage output. It's a potential, not a guarantee. So as combatants. But I recommend taking the rocket aircraft out first because they move very fast and uh, in the reconnaissance role of the uh, CV, uh, faster that you can get out ahead of the forward battle line and start detecting ships, the better. Because it gives your team as much lead time as possible to see w what the enemy's formative movements are and to, to begin reacting based on them. But these rocket uh, aircraft are effective somewhat against destroyers, but mostly against cruisers, especially those that are kind of um, broadsiding you, like this uh, unintelligent bot is doing, uh, and you have a you know, relatively light skin. Although these are German, and so they have AP rockets, you can see I scored a Citadel there. It's a pretty decent damage on the first one. Now, it's not essential that you do a lot of damage on your first run. Your main responsibility is uh, spotting. So, uh, because we only have two aircraft left uh, and not a lot of other targets, I'm going to go ahead and click F and send these home prematurely. And take out the torpedo bombers for our second run and talk about the second responsibility of, of aircraft carriers. Now, pressing F and sending your aircraft home early is important because if you just eat up all your aircraft and they all die to anti-aircraft fire very fast, it takes longer for your CV to regenerate them. So especially at higher tiers with stronger AA, you quickly find yourself in a bad position where you don't really have any aircraft to launch and you're waiting around on regen times to basically stun lock your DPS potential, which is ordinarily very high on CV. So denial. Um, denial is basically battle space shaping. It's either task saturating your opponent or setting conditions on the battlefield that are going to uh, influence their, their manner of movement. I'm trying to do that right now. Just by throwing a couple of rogue torpedoes into the smokescreen and deterring them from uh, making any forward move, basically making them think twice uh, about where they're going to maneuver, hopefully uh, maneuver in such a way that's uh, advantageous to your team. For example, with this battleship here, uh, as torps are very effective against. Uh, If you start running successful torpedo attacks on, say, a battleship when it's putting its bow in to enemy combatants, uh, you can sometimes convince it to turn bow into your torpedoes uh, in order to dodge your torpedoes, putting them into this dilemma where they would otherwise be uh, uh, secure against uh, surface combatants. Now they're broadsiding themselves and so gunfire in order to dodge your torpedoes, so that's very helpful for your team. The third category of ships here, uh, of aircraft, is the dive bombers. Um, and dive bombers are very different from the other classes. If you look down, you can already see that the reticle is almost directly below uh, the aircraft. And so you need to get right up on an enemy ship in, in order to initiate an attack. They can be a little bit tricky in setting up the attack, so uh, I, I recommend with this type of aircraft to mostly focus on larger, slower uh, ships, such as this battleship we're about to target up here or potentially cruisers if they're not so nimble, uh, like the Omaha, for example. The other categories of aircraft, it's best to attack perpendicular, but with these, it's best to attack from the rear or from the front, especially from the rear, where you can generally take advantage of uh, the movement speed of the battleship. And these were decent hits, and they didn't do a whole lot of damage. It's best if possible to try to get your attack to be as, as tightly 
centered in the middle of the vessel in order to assure uh, citadel hits. Uh, these aircraft in particular have armor-piercing bombs, so they're much more likely to do that. Uh, there we go, we got one center hit, uh, so that's one basically auto-citadel. And this Nikolai has terrible AA, so because he's unattended, uh, I can pretty much free-range him, and uh, players find this very frustrating. The more that you play in CB, uh, I, I feel like it makes you a, a better captain of other types of ships, because... Uh, Understand there's another citadel. How to uh, how to play cooperatively when there are um, CVs on the on the table. But yeah, so the third responsibility of the CVs is just in their sheer damage. They have a very high potential for damage. That's not to say that you're guaranteed to get a lot of damage, but uh, if if you're uh, pretty decent and uh, your team is is looking out for you, that is, you don't get hit by a rogue destroyer that sneaks around the back of the map or something like that, uh, you can you can do pretty consistently, you know, incredible amounts of damage. Where we're sitting at in the map right now is, is not bad, so I'm taking my time to talk to you about it, um, but uh, I'd say routinely, like in the 60,000 range, it shouldn't be especially difficult for uh, CV. The torpedoes are nice because even though they don't cause a lot of damage compared to destroyers or, or the cruisers, the torpedoes on this platform, uh, you can cause consistent flooding. Uh, and the flooding damage can be incredible. You can stack repeated hits after you've gotten the damage con. Much in the same way as you would uh, if you're trying to stack burns on something like a battleship and the repeated hits from, from AA. The St. Louis is too tempting and he's dodging to avoid these destroyer torpedoes, so. It's a ship that I ordinarily wouldn't target with uh, aircraft torpedoes, but I'm doing it anyways. Uh, just because it's obvious in the scenario that we can get some really good hits against a ship that's very vulnerable to them. So we got some decent damage in the flood. Some players really like the rocket aircraft. I'm personally not a big fan of them because it requires so much skill to find a good shot, especially with the AP rockets that uh, the German class has. It's not quite as much the case with the uh, HE rockets that other nations have. But so for the German carrier line, most of your uh, damage value comes from either the uh, bombers or the torpedo plates. And you can see that these aircraft have like a cooldown consumable. Uh, if you look at the reticle on uh, the left hand side of it, there's this green bar that was going down. That's your, uh, your sort of speed boost. Once it's up, you can use a uh, cooldown by pressing on and another set of another Citadel. Uh, so that you can get that speed boost back. And, and frequent use of a speed boost uh, combined with timely uses of the uh, speed boost consumable uh, are very important to the damage value of the aircraft carrier because much of your damage value that is lost comes from the uh, flight time of the aircraft across the map. More time spent flying instead of bombing is uh, damage value that's lost. Citadel, yes, there we go. So doing some really good damage on this guy. Already our damage the team because they're so clustered in like that, I think it's an appropriate time to switch back to torpedoes because it's a much more guaranteed hit. I want to note that this is something that's not really achievable at the higher tiers when the ships are so clustered together like that, sharing AA umbrellas. AA at higher tiers will absolutely chew you up in a way that uh, they just don't on lower tiers. But that's a big trade-off, because you don't do quite as much damage with the aircraft as uh, at the lower tiers. So the, the fine art of setting up a successful uh, attack run and executing it, what I'll just call a final attack heading like this, is really the essence of playing a CD well. If you can get good at doing it consistently, your, your damage value is going to be off the chart. You see that CD there is going to forward to try to, to guard itself. So when you come around, you enter your final attack heading by left-clicking, and it brings you into this final attack heading mode, where you you then see that, that bar is kind of narrowing. And the game incentivizes you to 
hold on your final attack heading as long as possible to allow that um, window to narrow as much as possible to increase your accuracy. This guy's probably going to die before I get the chance to kill him. Yep, there it is. But I can still take some rogue shots on this destroyer that's off to his right hand side. I have three seconds remaining in my window. And there. It's probably not going to hit, but it's going to, yep, it's going to force the DD to react in his movement. Just like so, and hopefully exposing himself a little bit more on the broadside to our friendly ships. See, that's the battle space shaping aspect of the CV. It's very effective. As I'm moving to the objective, I'll, I'll hit minimap real quick and show another important feature of the CV. If you click M, you go into the minimap mode where you can then click an area of the map and set to autopilot location for your CV. So that way, you can move around the map sort of at a strategic level without worrying about taking time away from your aircraft. Precious time away from your aircraft. Because time in the cockpit, time on speed boost equals damage value. Yeah, it, it really is just that simple. The St. Louis is a fast ship, and it's, it's normally pretty hard to hit, but uh, this guy is on a straight course, and I might be able to get some lucky hits. I did get one, and you saw that it, it kind of forced him to increase his turn a little bit, to turn towards the island, exposing his broadside to friendly combatants that uh, were uh, no longer in, in A. But had they been, uh, it would have been a great opportunity to light him up, so it just demonstrates the battle space shaping kind of mechanism of the, the CV. And you notice that that, um, uh, that that last torpedo hit him head on, but it didn't do any damage. And that's because it just didn't have the time to arm. So we'll go into my final attack heading here in a moment, and uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But you have basically a, a window from the time that you enter your final attack heading. Uh, the, the solid color, that's orange, no shoot, green, that's shoot. The close bar is the minimum arming distance for your That's one. And for that St. Louis, I think it's a good target to try out the AP. Uh, the well, the AP rockets. I accidentally selected the torpedo, so we'll just roll with that. But the AP rockets uh, work really well against uh, anything with light skin. Uh, although destroyers are still notoriously difficult to hit with anything. Uh, the, the rockets on these uh, German aircraft carriers don't work quite as well on the destroyers. So the speed boost consumable, you can see I'm coming up to the end of my, my normal speed boost. And then right as it's in, I, I let go of the W key and I hit R to activate the speed boost consumable automatically. The speed boost is instantly replenished and I can ride it out for a few seconds without any any loss to that. So again, with the torpedoes, it's important to try to get as perpendicular as possible of an attack run. And three kilometers is my, my rule of thumb. No less than three kilometers away to begin an attack heading. I get one. And somehow or another, because these guys have managed to get and keep both of the caps, uh, I'm going to bots on this, they're still in the lead on points, even though they are at a significant uh, disadvantage on ships. So I'm going to continue to try to bully the St. Louis to the ground, see if I can sink him. This was a, a terrible run. Uh, you see how uh, my attack pattern was so wide to begin with, I easily could have gotten both of those torpedoes to land, uh, but I didn't. As you're on your final attack heading, like so, if you, the more that you move your reticle around to adjust your shot placement, the more that that reticle widens up. So keeping it still is important to narrowing the window. And also adjusting for speed, which I narrowly did, but I did a kind of a poor job on. Uh, but adjusting for speed is a, a major part of uh, getting the torpedoes to land quickly. That's part of the reason why battleships are, are such an easy turn. But I will mention that battleships uh, at, the, at the higher tiers, especially, uh, start coming equipped with more consistent and more robust um, oh, torpedo be belt armor. Uh, and that torpedo belt armor uh, it significantly reduces the ability of your uh, any torpedoes to, to do damage against them, so they can be very, very frustrating. 
you can see the St. Louis is tracking on what I'm trying to do. He can see what type of fighter that I am. He, can, he knows that I want to come in perpendicular to him. So he's keeping his nose on me, which means that this is not the first time that a CV has ever bullied him. But he's giving up, wanting to beeline it to my CV in the hopes that he can catch it unaware and do some damage, maybe sink it. I'm going to try not to let him do that. Some decent damage with the rockets, and if I get one more hit like that, I can easily take him out. But first, I'm going to kind of botch it a little bit by attacking downslope from the mountain. You can see that uh, when you're attacking downslope from the mountain, look how far away my reticle is. Now I'm going to miss this attack run completely. That's why I do not recommend attacking from the shore, uh, especially if there is a big downhill, because you'll just flub your whole attack run. Well, I got my eye on him from the rear. Three kilometers, start my turn. Now I'm in my running leg, and then I cut again to my final leg. Three kilometers, begin my attack run. Let the reticle settle. It's a little bit perpendicular, this might not finish him. Yeah, you see all of those shots ricocheted because those uh, AP rockets really require a perpendicular attack. Now, if those had been any other nation, PG rockets, it would have sunk because the, the angling wouldn't have mattered nearly so much. But I think it's safe to say that we kind of have this guy um, in the bag, although we may still lose because the other players um, who are surprisingly human don't want to cap, and so they have a significant point lead on us. Three point five kilometers starting my attack run, so that's plenty of time for me to line up a good shot. It's also plenty of time for him to react, which he does not seem to want to do. Uh, I think that this guy is tired of being bullied by a CV and just wanted it to be over. We have my gegnerischen Kreuzer versenkt. Got any urine all over your face? Time for the Valkyrie. Uh, I'll give a quick down and dirty on just how difficult it is to hit CDs with, I'm sorry, to hit DDs with torpedoes. These guys can react really, really well. They're so nimble uh, that it should be very hard to hit them. They require a lot more lead. You can see that he's already turning in. Uh, and I may be able to get one torpedo hit on him, but uh, frankly, I doubt it just because of how, how nimble these guys are. Going to my attack run before he's even spotted because I know where he is. I'm going to hit my speed boost on the final attack heading run. And I don't think either one of those are going to hit. He's just too nimble. But it is forcing him to react and, and continue to cut, you know, fruitless circles out there. Uh, so hopefully that'll keep him busy long enough for our friends to swing around and get in cap. At this point, I feel obligated to put something in chat. But we're going to head and do a quick demo on destroyers dive bomber runs. It's it notoriously difficult. And because this guy is just smoked out, I don't blame him. He wants to obscure himself from me uh, and keep himself alive long enough uh, so that there's a chance that he might win by point value. Frankly, I don't see that happening. But he's turned his AA off so that I can't spot him really so easily. The closest I can do is uh, hope to get close enough to the ground there that I can spot him from the smoke, but it's, it's just not happening. So I'll have to wait for the smoke to clear. And in the meanwhile, there's really nothing that I can do. I'm reliant on my friends to uh, finish capping and try to keep him buttoned down in here uh, and, and not risk getting out of the smoke to go jump into cap. This is an example of how the CVs can be useful in battle space shaping. There he is. If I can just convince him to stay in the smoke, uh, our friends can cap, and we should have the game. But his smoke is up, the gig is up, and so he's moving. I need to get a substantial amount of lead on him. These destroyers are so fast. That is a Hail Mary. I'm very surprised I even got one hit. And you can see how little damage that it did to that that DD. To show you, it's even more difficult coming in on a head-in run. Normally, as he's steering, he's looking in the direction that he's driving, more often than not. And so, you can, yeah, you can see it's it's far, far harder to get an attack run on a DD from the front. And that's true with any type of weapon, uh, but 
but I'd say especially the dive bombers. And I think one more torpedo would probably sink him, although I doubt that we'll get it off because we have 30 seconds on the clock. But, uh, that is that is about it for uh, this match. Uh, we had a great game. The CV did quite a bit of damage. Uh, and it looks like we are losing the game for uh, point values there. Das kind of an inability to get in cap. So, uh, CVs are exceptional. Uh, some players say that they're a bit OP, but uh, I disagree with that because, case in point in this match, it's just not possible to carry the team necessarily, uh, as some players joke that you can do with, with CVs. Although, uh, I think it is safe to say that CVs are the penultimate supporting class. Uh, they function very, very well when you're paying attention to uh, your friendly ships and taking note of what their needs are. Um, and even though you can't do great damage to destroyers, if you can keep them spotted and keep them cornered and keep them reacting, uh, you can really uh, lock their screening force down and uh, uh, enable your team to move in successfully on a cap if they have the initiative to do that. Um, but a great run. You can see we got a lot of Citadel hits uh, with those AP bombs, and that accounted for a decent chunk of our damage here, although the majority of it certainly came from the 20 torpedo hits that we did. I'm surprised that with 20 torpedo hits, we only got two flooding, but such is RNG. Uh, eight spotted. Um, e normally, I'd say on a match like this, I, I should have more than that. Um, it is one of the most important roles of the CV, uh, but that is kind of the luck of the draw. Uh, I may not have been credited for spotting a ship, uh, but if I kept it spotted when it otherwise would have gone dark again, uh, that's just as good. On the leaderboard, uh, the, the CVs, if they're piloted by a, a, any, any kind of competent captain, I'd say should generally be at least at, at the mid-tier, uh, but certainly it's not uncommon to see them uh, in, in higher tiers uh, as well. If you see a, a CV at the bottom tier, um, they're brand new uh, to that, that class of ships and, and have, kind of have no idea what they're doing or they got snuffed out very early on um, by something like a destroyer or a submarine in, uh, in just a chance window uh, and let their guard down. But uh, that is CVs in action in a nutshell. I'll go back to port and uh, do a quick down and dirty on, on the ship itself. Um, I have permanent camos on these because uh, I didn't earn them by grinding through the tech tree. I won these uh, a couple years ago in a special event uh, when they released the, the German carriers. Um, so the German carriers, they and, and all the carriers progress uh, uh, every two tiers. So they start at tier four, the next one is at tier six. Uh, that's the Vesser. And then the next one uh, is at, at tier eight. Um, and uh, partly because of that, and, and partly it's just inherent to the platform, uh, CVs are far more grindy in the tech tree than any other class of ship. Uh, so it requires a lot of effort, um, a lot of uh, ship XP, and a lot of credits uh, in order to progress through. And if you look at the equipment, you can partly see why. Uh, there's so much uh, that can be upgraded. Uh, you can beeline it straight to hull B and straight to the next tier. Um, but more often than not, players want to uh, buff out the, the aircraft uh, on that platform instead of just rushing. That's certainly what I choose to do. Uh, and so especially if you do that, uh, just prepare to be in for a bit of a grind. Um, but CVs at lower tiers don't really have that, that same grind and they don't have quite all, all of these upgrades. Um, so it, it is relatively easy to kind of get in and, and kind of start having fun. I, I'd say that they're very, very different from other classes, but they have a low skill floor. Um, and that changes very rapidly as you start moving up the tiers. When AA becomes significantly more of an issue, uh, and you start talking about uh, methods of, of dodging AA, uh, methods of singling out the, the, the lone lamb, uh, methods of uh, weeding through flak, um, then it, it's a whole nother story and, and the skill floor rises very sharply. But in the early tiers, um, low skill floor and, and high skill ceiling, uh, I think that they're, they're pretty forgiving at, at first. And a lot of fun to play, uh, especially in, in a division of, of people that you can uh, kind of coordinate with and, uh, and, and talk to you about kind of you know, what their needs are. You can see that our performance on that last match really didn't matter um, so much. Uh, whereas if I was in division with uh, some, some players that were cooperative, 
uh, and could coordinate the initiative to seize caps, so the, the match would have been a, a completely different story. But I'm glad it went the way it did, so that it kind of dragged everything out until the very end uh, to give uh, more more time to talk through uh, all of the main points of the of the CV. Uh, they're very vulnerable and they're a delicious target. So um, keep your head down, keep behind islands, and, and keep out of trouble, and uh, focus on your aircraft uh, and uh, just cranking attack run after attack run. Uh, DPS, DPS, and uh, you can you can crank some serious damage while uh, keeping the enemy spotted and forcing them to, to react to your your movements. Uh, surface combatants, they don't want to look in the sky; they want to look on the water. That's why they came to play World of Warships. Uh, you know, not to shoot down aircraft. So um, you can be a thorn in their side, absolutely, if you you play CVs well. But highly recommend giving them a try. Uh, they're 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 very rewarding to play.